Hello. I'm going to keep talking about <coughs> excuse me, causal relationships, and we're going to start talking about feedback as well, and we'll see where that comes from as we go through this discussion. So I'm going to ask you to consider these two aspects, if you like. I'll also call them variables later on. This is taken from a business example, which can apply to some of you if you ever want to open your own business, or as you'll see, businesses and other issues related to sustainability often go hand in hand. So imagine here that you have a customer base that refers to the number of customers that use a certain product. And we're also going to say that another variable is sales associated with words of mouth. So I go and tell you, hey, I bought this great new product that it's an electric bike. It lets me bike to school on a consumes way less energy and you're like oh my gosh what a great idea i'm gonna do the same thing that would be an example of a sale by word of mouth where i spread what's going on to somebody else because i like it so much so let's think about what the causal relationship is between these two terms and i i'll leave it there i would ask you a question now and that would be to try to sketch the relationship. Is there a positive relationship between them and between which ones? Is it from sales to customer base? Is it from customer base to sales? How would you describe this in a little picture that shows the causality between these two? And would that picture have a positive sign or a negative sign on the arrow that relates the two of them? So here's what I came up with. <laughs> Imagine these, this relationship. You have sales by word of mouth on the left, customer base in this case on the right. Now, I would argue that if I'm spreading word about some great product, not just me, but if everybody is or if there's more of it happening, then the customer base is going to increase. Similarly, if there's fewer sales by word of mouth, people stop talking about it because maybe they don't like it or... It's not that interesting, whatever it is, then the customer base is probably going to be smaller than it would have been had the sales not decreased. So that would, both of those descriptions imply a positive causation between sales by word of mouth and customer base. I hope that's clear. And that's similar to what we've talked about in the previous class. Now let's go the other way around. Let's think about customer base and whether that affects sales by word of mouth. We've only looked at it in one direction thus far. Now we're going to look at it in two directions. <clears throat> if we consider this one, customer base and sales by word of mouth. I would argue that as your customer base increases, then you're probably going to get more people who are going to say, wow, that's a great product. And if there were some anyway, there'd be more if the customer base is bigger. And so they're going to, in turn, spread the word by word of mouth, and that would be a positive correlation in that case. Similarly, if the customer base went down, I would argue that sales by word of mouth would also go down compared to what it would have been had the customer base stayed the same. So again, I would say it's a positive correlation, but this is going the other direction. If you remember on the previous slide, the sales by word of mouth was on the left and the customer base was on the right. Now the customer base is on the left and the sales by word of mouth is on the right. So I'm saying that they're both positively correlated with each other. So we can put all of that on one diagram and that's what I'm going to show you in the next slide. We don't have to limit ourselves to just things moving in one direction or things affecting each other in one direction. That effect can go back. And this is an example of feedback. Sales by word of mouth increases the customer base. As the customer base gets bigger and bigger, that's going to in turn increase the number of sales by word of mouth. So you get a positive correlation there. You get they're each going to increase or decrease. If one of them goes down, the other one will go down, causing yet the other one to go back down. So that would also be a positive correlation in both directions, but lead to 
a, a spiraling downward in that case, where a decrease in one causes a decrease in the other, and it keeps just going down, down, down. Okay, so this is an example of feedback. Now let's consider two other variables, or two other aspects. One of them is the customer base, and the other one is customer losses. I'm going to ask you to try to repeat the same thing we just did and see if you can come up with a relationship between these two. Well, as a result of that consideration, here's one way to look at it. As the customer base increases, now customer losses refer to lower numbers of customers who are associated with a given product. All right, so as the customer base increases, you're always going to have customer losses, no matter what. But as the customer base increases, the number of losses is probably also going to increase. It's kind of like saying the number of deaths if, in a large, if you have a large population. Well, there's going to be more people who are dying from that population just simply because there's more people and people die every so often. Same thing here. Large customer base, there's going to be more losses for a variety of reasons. And here I say, you know, they maybe they stop liking the product or they stop buying the product because they have enough of it. Or perhaps they even do die. That would also be considered uh, a customer loss as well. So uh, as the customer base goes down, you could also expect the customer losses to go down because there's fewer customers to lose if your base is lower. So that's the other uh, example here. But in both cases, it's, I would say that it's positively correlated. If the customer base increases, the customer losses is going to increase. If the customer base decreases, then the customer losses is going to also decrease. Positive correlation. Now let's look at it the other direction. All right, so customer losses increase, but what does that do to the customer base? Well, when the customer losses increase, the customer base, that's the number of customers, that is going to De the, number, the base is going to decrease. So if the customer losses increase, the number of customers you have is going to decrease. That's a negative correlation. Let's check it by looking in the other direction. As the customer losses increase, the customer base decreases. And the as the customer losses decrease, the customer base would increase compared to what it was previously. So in both cases, they go in the opposite direction. So I would argue that they are Ne negatively causally related to each other. That's why the negative sign is there. So if I were to put customer base and customer losses together, I'd have something like this. Now look, this is also a form of feedback. The difference between these two types of feedback is that this feedback here is going to tend to balance things out. So when customer base increases, the customer losses is going to compensate for that and say, oh, no, no, no. You need, to, you need to decrease. So it's kind of like it's self-correcting, which is what is this type of feedback results in, the balancing feedback. The other feedback tends to make it go to the extreme. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. In this case, it adjusts itself. If it gets smaller and the other one decreases and causes it to get less smaller. So that would be an example of negative feedback or balancing feedback. The other one is reinforcing feedback. And in Sturman, they take this example, actually, and they draw a couple of uh, pictures of how to draw the entire thing all in one figure. And the bottom one of these is the correct way to draw it, where you're looking at customer base and how that customer base is going to change as a result of sales by from word of mouth and customer losses. In one case, you have a reinforcing feedback. That's the R. That's the little R that's in the circle on the left. That means that things are getting more and more and more so. The the B on the right-hand side shows how it's there's a balancing going on. It's a different kind of feedback because you have a negative uh, piece in there and a positive. When you have an odd number of negative components like that, then you get a balancing situation. Whereas when you have an even number and zero is even, like on the left, 
that's when you get the reinforcing feedback that can lead to, we'll see later, at least to something called exponential growth, where things can get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so this is our introduction to feedback. And as Kurt Sturman says, when you draw, when you find a loop, kind of get excited when we see a loop, but it actually means something dynamic is going on. And what he suggests we do is figure out the polarities, the pl pluses and minuses, and therefore from that determine whether the loop is a reinforcing loop or a balancing loop. And this is going to lead to the first activity. I'm going to have us do this in, ca in class. So this is just a summary of what I just said. But the activity that we'll work on is considering this. This is also related to a business scenario where we're looking at quality, price, delivery delay, and functionality and how that affects product attractiveness. And in this exercise, we're going to actually put positives and negatives on how each of these affects product attractiveness. But we also want to see if there's an influence on each other. So are there other connections you could draw between any of these other quantities besides just how they affect product attractiveness? And for that matter, does product attractiveness affect any of them either or as well? So that will be the activity we work on in class.